Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. 30,000 here, we need to amortize over the life of the bond. So we're basically just gonna divide it out by the number of payments and then uh, reduce it at the same time of each payment and we're going to reduce it to the other side will be interest expense. Why? Because that 30,000 came about because of the difference in the market rate and the rate that was on the bond. So let's think about that uh, type of amortization schedule we'll have, which is just going to be straight line amortization. So when we put the bond on the books at uh, 1 1, we had a 30,000 unamortized discount here. And the, the carrying amount of the bond then was issued at 240,000 minus or plus in this case the 30,000 and enter. So it was the carrying amount then was the 270, which is of course the 240 and 30. Then after six months, we're going to pay off some interest on 630, and therefore. How much are we going to pay off? Let's take out the calculator here. There's a couple ways we can calculate it. We're going to say that we have a 30,000 uh, amount that we have to amortize over the life of the bond. We could divide it by the number of years, divided by 15 years, enter. That would give us 2,000. That's per year. But we're going to we're going to do this every six months, so twice a year. So we could then divide it by two, and it's going to be 1,000. Next way we can think about it, we can say 30,000. It's 15 years but we do it twice a year therefore it's 30 periods that we're talking about so we could just divide it by 30 and that would give us the same 1000 so let's do that calculation here i'm going to say this equals the 30,000 divided by in this case just 30 periods 15 years times two basically uh and enter that's 1000 then what's going to happen to the unamortized premium equals the 30,000 minus the 1000 that we're going to reduce it by brings it to 29 then the carrying amount then will be um we could think of it this way it's going to be the 240 thousand which is the face amount of the bond here plus the 29 and it went down by 1000 to 269 so after we post this transaction this journal entry then we would assume that this amount's going to stay the same because we're not paying off any of the principal this amount's going to go down to 29 and this minus this will be the carrying amount of 269. So therefore, what we have to do then is we got to take this premium, we got to reduce it by this $1,000. So this has a credit balance. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to put this over here in uh, C26. Right click and paste one, two, three and we will debit that amount for $1,000. Okay, so now the interest expense is going, to, is going to be the difference between those two, obviously. So I'm gonna do that with the negative sum function. I'm gonna say negative SUM, and we could move this out of the way. You could put it here and move it up here, and you could highlight from the bottom up. So it's going to be then 86. 86 plus the 1,000 equals the 96. Debits equal the credits. If we highlight all of these cells, then the debits minus the credits, equals zero. A couple things to note here. Note that I put this on the bottom because it was helpful for me to build the, the journal entry. But if uh, you're in a picky system that wants the two debits on top, you might have to adjust that and put the two debits on top. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as uh, they're in the right column and, and they're in the right format in terms of a negative number in this case. But uh, some systems, you're going to need that on top. And also note that th this is going to this amount is actually kind of 
reducing the interest expense which can be a little bit confusing and that's because of course we're at a premium we issued it at a premium in this case rather than a discount all right so let's post this out we're going to say the bond the bond interest expense is here it's going to be here on the trial balance we're going to post it to the blue section in i29 so within i29 we're going to select equals and point to that 86 it's going to bring this up in the debit direction put us out of balance going to bring net income down so note that the interest expense just like kind of rent expense we're renting the money brought net income down like so and then we're going to post the cash so here's the cash here here it is on the trial balance there's something in it therefore we're just going to double click on it go to the end of it and plus and then post to that cash nine six that's going to bring the cash down then we're going to go to the uh premium on bond payable once again something's in there so i'm going to double click on it go to the end of it and plus point to the 1000 here that's going to bring this 30,000 down to 29. so now we have the 240 didn't go down because we're not paying any principal off and we amortized the uh, premium down like so the carrying amount if we highlight both of them uh 269,000 269,000 again a lot of people get disturbed by the fact that the principal doesn't go down at all as it does in other types of uh, liabilities like a mortgage or like a car payment and that's just going to be the terms of the note we're just paying the rent on it we'll pay the entire 240 at the end of the term being in uh, 15 years in this case all right so we're gonna do the same type of thing again we're gonna have the 1231 record bond interest and straight line amortization so on uh, 1231 we will basically do a very similar journal entry here pretty much the same journal entry here so but let's think through it one more time what we're going to do is is cash affected our first question and yes cash is affected it's now all the way out in 1231 we are going to pay the interest once again and cash has a debit balance we need to make it go down therefore we're going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so i'm going to copy the cash copy the cash we're going to put that under the date i'm in cell c29 right click paste one two three and then how much are we going to credit for? Well, let's pull out the calculator one time and do the calculation with the calculator one more time. And the question being, how much are we going to pay? When we calculate it, we take the stuff that's been written in stone, not the market value stuff. We have the face amount, which is already on the bond. It's written on the bond, 240000 And then we're going to multiply it times the uh, rate that is written on the bond, not the market rate, the rate that's on the bond. It's written in stone times. 0.08 in this case that gives us 19.2 remember that anytime we talk about interest we mean for a year and then we have to say well you know did we rent it for a year no it's only been rented for six out of 12 months so if we think that's one half six twelves so we could think of that in, in terms of a ratio i could think of it let's break it down to a monthly amount divided by 12 it means that we're paying 1006 per month times six months and that will give us the 9.6. I'm gonna do that same calculation over here in E29. I'm gonna start with a negative to make it a negative number. We're gonna have the 240,000 face amount times 0.08 interest. This time, I'm just gonna divide it by two for half a year because it's 6 twelfths of a year, one half of a year divided by two. All right, so there is that. Then, of course, the other side is gonna to go to bond interest expense. Why? because it's just like renting a house. We rented the money, we've got to pay the rent on it. Rent's called interest when we rent money. And we can see that we have a debit balance here. We need to make it go up in the debit direction because expenses always go up. How do we do that? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that up top in C28, right click and paste it one, two, three. Now you would think that we would debit it by the nine, six, but we've got the premium over here that we need to amortize over the life of the bond. And we're gonna amortize it using a straight line method. So if we go to our amortization table, as we do this on 1231, uh, we're gonna do the same thing here. So how much are we gonna amortize? Well, of course, we're gonna amortize the same uh, 1,000 because it's a straight line method, but how did we get that? We take the 30,000 divided by, divided by 15 years times two, meaning we have uh, 30 periods time, uh, divided by 30, is going to give us the 1000 per period and then 
What should the unamortized premium be? Well, we have 29, so it's gonna equal this 29 that it was before, minus the amount that's been amortized for this period, 1,000. So we're gonna bring it down to 28. And then we can calculate the carrying amount as being the 240 face amount. That's this amount here. And then we're gonna add to it the 29,000, gives us a carrying of 268. And of course, we could also calculate that by the uh, uh, 269 minus the 1000 here. All right, so what does that mean? That means that at the end of the day, this is gonna stay at 240 after we record this journal entry. This is gonna go down to 28, which means that this minus this, once we're done, will be the 268,000. So that also means that we're gonna to have to uh, bring down the premium by 1000. So here's the premium, it's at 29. We can see it has a credit balance. We need to bring it down. How do we bring something down? We do the opposite thing to it which in this case is a debit. So I'm gonna copy that, right click and copy it. We're gonna put that down here in C30, right click and paste, one, two, three. In D30, we're gonna put that $1,000. And now of course we have a credit of, of nine, six, a debit of 1,000, difference is eight, six. That's what we need up here in the debit. That's what, what's gonna be the bond interest expense. So I'm gonna do that with our negative sum formula like so. I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's always in my way right there, but I could have just highlighted from the bottom up and left it there and it would have been okay too. And that will give us our 86. 86 plus 1000 gives us the 96, which equals our credit. And if we highlight all of them, also in balance in that format as well. Okay, so just remember to note that we do. I did put this on the bottom and we don't have our two debits on top. So that could cause problems depending on who's you know grading your software. If you're using actual software in, in practice, it won't be a problem and I highly recommend building your journal entries in such a way that makes the most sense to you if you had to go back and look at it and be audited on it so you can tell the auditor, hey, this is what we did. But uh, if you're doing it for software for grading purposes, sometimes they can be really picky in terms of how uh, the format looks. So we're gonna post this, here's bond interest expense. Here's the bond interest expense here. We're gonna post this to I-29. So I'm gonna, something is in it, therefore I'm gonna double click on it. We'll go to the end of it. And plus, and we're gonna post this 8-6 right there. That's gonna bring the interest expense up, put us out of balance and bring net income down. So remember, net income is the sales, in this case, revenue minus the expenses. And the expense of interest is similar to rent expense. We're renting the money, call the interest, increasing the expense, decreasing net income. Then we have the cash here, cash is here on the trial balance, and we're gonna post it to I-20. I'm gonna double click on it because something is in it. We're gonna go to the end of it and select plus, and then we'll point to that nine six, and that will bring cash down because we're paying off the interest. Then we're gonna post the premium of 1,000. Here it is, uh, the premium here. Here's the premium here. We're gonna go to the blue area in I-24. Double click, go to the end of it, and plus and we're going to post that 1000 and enter so that puts us back in balance hopefully you can see the trend that is happening now of course in that th there's no change to the bond payable because we're not going to pay that off until the end of the period and that's just the term of the bond after 15 years the premium will go down by the 1000 and we're going to uh, make it go down in a straight line method by 1000 per period 30 periods because there's 15 years and we pay semi-annually twice a year. And then of course the expense will be reflected as the difference. The carrying of value in this case is uh, 268,000. It will be at the end of 15 years, just 40, 240,000 because we will have uh, to pre amortize this down to zero, thereby leaving us with the 240 that we will have to then pay as of the end of the term of the bond being 15 years in this case.